Hello! In this video, we will talk about how to find the volumes of solids using cylindrical shells. For many solids generated by revolving a region about an axis, we can find the volume using cylindrical discs or washers. For many of these same solids, we can use cylindrical shells to find the volume. In this set of videos, we will demonstrate how to use cylindrical shells to calculate a volume and contrast their use with washers. You will recall that when finding volumes by cross-sections, each slice had a volume that we determined the same way when considering the outer and inner radii. When using cylindrical shells, we'll consider concentric rings or shells which radiate from an axis of revolution. What is a cylindrical shell? A cylindrical shell is the result of taking a narrow rectangle and rotating it around an axis parallel to the longer edge of the rectangle. So here I've got a rectangle where the axis of revolution is parallel to the long edge. When I rotate it about the axis, I get a shell that's got some thickness to it. And I can think about cutting it and unrolling it to produce a rectangle that has some thickness. So in other words, it's a very thin rectangular prism. Where the volume of that rectangular prism comes from the circumference of the circle, 2 pi r, times the height of the cylindrical shell, and then the thickness comes from the thickness of the rectangle there. So that I know that the volume of that shell is the circumference, 2 pi r, times the height, times the thickness. So let's apply this to an actual problem. Suppose we have the region bounded by the graphs of y equals 3 times e to the negative x, the x-axis, and the lines x equals negative 1 half and x equals 2. This region is rotated about the line x equals negative 2. We want to find the volume of the resulting solid. The first step is always to sketch the region. So go ahead and pause the video and sketch the region. This is something that you should be able to do by hand. However, you can use a graphing calculator if that's helpful. So the first step is we've drawn the, drawn the region. So I've got my axis of revolution here at x equals negative 2. I've got this edge, which is x equals negative 1 half. And I've got this edge at x equals 2. And then I've got the curve y equals 3 times e to the negative x. The next step is to then rotate that region about the axis of revolution and sketch the resulting 3D solid. So if I do that, I'm going to think about where this edge of the region, which is at x equals negative 1 half, which is 1 and a half units from x equals negative 2, that's going to get revolved around the axis. So that's going to come over here to x equals negative 3.5. So I'm going to draw in that segment. And so I get the cylinder but this is actually going to be hollow. If I think about x equals 2, and that gets revolved around the line x equals negative 2, this is 4 units away, so it's going to come 4 units on the other side. So I've got that little segment there. And so that's going to get revolved around, and it's going to give this little, little edge, a little lip here. And then the rest comes when we rotate that curve around the line x equals negative 2, and I get something that almost looks somewhat hat-like. I see, again, the region, the resulting 3D solid. However, there is a flaw with this particular example with the 3D solid, and it doesn't have this little edge, this loop, this lip down here. And so I have to think of this almost as the brim of the hat that would get, get there. Another view yet looks from the bottom so that if I have a thin rectangle there in the region, which gets rotated around the line x equals negative 2. I might see another ring down here at the bottom, which goes up to form a cylinder up here. Okay. So I can think of those, again, those, those shells that radiate from the axis of revolution. After we've drawn the sketch of the region and the 3D, 3D solid, it's helpful to then partition the region using the thin rectangles. And recall that the rectangles need to be positioned parallel to the axis of revolution. So here I've taken my interval where x is between negative 1 half and a positive 2. 
I set up a partition where I've got x sub 0, which is negative 1 half, x sub 1, x sub 2, and I stop at x sub n, where x sub n is then equal to 2, that right endpoint. I want to consider what happens to the kth rectangle as it is revolved around the axis of revolution. I'm going to sketch the resulting cylindrical shell, and I also want to label its dimensions, including the radius, height, and thickness. So if I sketch the cylindrical solid or the cylindrical shell that results by rotating that kth rectangle around the axis of revolution at x equals negative 2, I see something that's going to have a thickness given by the width of the rectangle. I've got the height is determined based on the function value at x equals x sub k. And then the radius, when I consider the greater minus the lesser, in this case the right minus the left, that radius comes from the x value, x sub k, minus the x value of my x sub of my axis of revolution, which is negative 2. So another version of this cylindrical shell looks like this. It's in green. And so I can, again, label the dimensions. So the radius of this cylindrical shell is going to be x sub k minus a negative 2. The height comes from the height of the function evaluated x sub k. So that's going to be 3 e to the negative x sub k. And then the thickness comes from the width of that rectangle. So the thickness is going to be x sub k minus x sub k minus 1, which I also denote as delta x sub k. So then when I go back and look at the volume of that cylindrical shell, I've got the circumference of that cylindrical shell, so 2 pi r sub k times the height, 3 times e to the negative x sub k, times the thickness of that shell, delta x sub k. So I've got 2 pi r times x sub k plus 2, times 3 times e to the negative x sub k, times delta x sub k. To find the actual volume of the solid then, I'm going to take those cylindrical shells and I'm going to sum them, which means I'm going to develop a Riemann sum using the volumes of the cylindrical shells. This is going to approximate the volume of the solid. So I'm going to take that formula that I just created for the cylindrical shell and I'm going to deposit it in the Riemann sum. So I've got 2 pi, this is 2 pi r, sub k times h sub k times delta x sub k, which is my thickness. I then, in order to develop the definite integral, based on the definition of the definite integral, I'm going to take the limit of the sum as the norm of the partition goes to 0. Remember that the norm of the partition going to 0 means that I'm going to take many more rectangles, and, very, and the rectangles are going to get thinner and thinner. And so I get the definite integral from negative 1 half to 2 of 2 pi times x plus 2 times 3 times e to the negative x dx. And note that the limits of integration, negative 1 half and 2, are the endpoints of the interval that we partitioned at the start of this problem. Now, this is an integral that we do not yet know how to solve by finding an antiderivative. We'll, we'll learn more about how to solve this using integration by parts in the next chapter. So in the meantime, we can use a um, some software to give us that this integral is approximately 65 cubic units. So the volume of our solid is approximately 64.939 cubic units. What are the important ideas to take from this video? Rather than taking slices or cross sections, in some cases we can find the volume of a solid using cylindrical shells where the volume of each cell is given by 2 pi r, the circumference of that cylinder, times the height of the cylinder, times the thickness. Next, 
noting that after we sketch the region being revolved around the axis of revolution and the resulting 3D solid, we want to partition the region into thin rectangles where the long edge of the rectangles are parallel to the axis of revolution. This is in contrast to when we use volumes by cross sections in which the thin rectangles are perpendicular to the axis of revolution. After we partition the region into thin rectangles, we want to draw and label the dimensions of the kth cylindrical shell resulting from revolving the kth rectangle around the axis. The volume of that kth cylindrical shell can be placed into a Riemann sum to approximate the volume of the solid, and finally, when we take the limit of that Riemann sum as the norm of the partition goes to zero, we produce the definite integral which gives the volume of the solid.